Hi, and welcome to another episode around the neighborhood with me, Scott McMahon. And this is the show about the quest for fun, history, and mystery in our backyard. And yes, today is quite noisy because we're standing over Interstate 205. And that's what this episode is about, is that the history of Interstate 205. What a topic. <laughs> well, if you're new to the show, welcome. Normally, I do some fun episodes and stories about different neighborhoods all over Oregon. Uh, and today just happens to be a topic about Interstate 205, but more importantly, this tolling project that ODOT is proposing for Interstate 205 and I-5. It's funny, originally I thought I'd do the whole episode just you know on the overpass overlooking Interstate 205, but it was so noisy that I've got to find a spot that's not so noisy so I can continue with the episode. Yes, tolling the interstate. But before we get into that, let's take a quick stroll back through the Wayback Machine and see what used to be here before Interstate 205 was finished. Originally, the plan for building Interstate 205 was to go through Multnomah County as the Portland metro area didn't extend as far east as it does today. The current committee that is working on solving the traffic problems we have in the metro area today uh, refer to traffic as congestion and they tend to refer to tolling as congestion pricing. Going back to the history of I-205, it was back in 1943 when New York-based planner Robert Moses proposed a plan to include a scenic thoroughfare for Portland residents on the east side to bypass Interstate 5. This plan was submitted as part of the Portland Improvement Plan, again back in 1943, and it was made by someone who didn't even live in the state of Oregon. Fast forward a few years later and things began to get momentum for construction of I-205. It actually took between the years 1955 to 1981 to complete this massive project. Originally, two routes were proposed for construction of I-205. The first route would have gone along 52nd Avenue and the other route would have gone along 96th Avenue. In 1961, it was decided that I-205 would be built along the outer loop along 96th Avenue. Originally, I-205 wasn't planned to connect to any particular road in the southern section. From the beginning, it was determined that I-205 would have to connect to the Mount Hood Freeway, and then later on, it appeared that I-205 would just connect to Lake Oswego at some point, and the congestion would just flow through that town in order to connect to Interstate 5. Well, once the alignment plans were announced, you can imagine that everyone embraced it with open arms. <laughs> of course not. In 1965, a cartoon from the Oregonian illustrates the gopher problem of different protest groups who didn't want I-205 going through their neighborhoods. One of the strongest and most influential of these groups came from Lake Oswego, who were able to convince the planners to push I-205 further south to connect I-5 through Tualatin and West Lynn. Continuous public protests prolonged the construction of I-205 as it wasn't until 1970 that the first part of the Finnish interstate opened. But take a look at this map. It originally connected over the Columbia River by way of 96th Avenue, then cutting east-west along the Mount Hood Freeway just above Powell Boulevard. Also in 1970, the southern part of Interstate 205 connected Westland to Oregon City with the opening of the Abernathy Bridge, named after George Abernathy, the governor of the provisional government of the Oregon country from 1845 to 1849. It took another 12 years before Interstate 205 connected the North End with the South End with completion in 1982. Most of this history was presented by Emily Benoit, who was part of the consultation team that is assisting the planning committee for today's next challenge, to toll or not to toll. Anyway, that's a little bit of history of how Interstate 205 was built. The reason I brought up the history of protests is because I suppose the current planning committee expects the same from today's proposed tolling of both Interstate 5 and Interstate 205. And as I understand it, the tolling of both I-5 and I-205 would generate ongoing tax dollars that would have to be spent on current and future congestion remedies. During the last open house online meeting, which ran about two and a half hours, they only discussed public comments and feedback for about seven minutes of that time. For most part, the communities don't like the idea of tolls. But apparently one of the transportation directors within one of the Portland initiatives is in favor of what they call congestion pricing. For those living at the southern end of Interstate 205, the concern is that if they propose a toll or what ODOT has deemed a tax 
from the stretch between Stafford Road to the Abernathy Bridge, what prevents residents from just getting off Stafford and taking the back roads through town to get back home? What happens to businesses off the 10th Street exit or along Highway 43 exits? I don't have the answers, but if you like to learn more, I've included all the links in the description of this video. You're probably only wanting to know where to send your public comments. Well, this is the link that ODOT has supplied is to send an email or voicemail to the project team at either organtolling at odot.state.or.us or call 503-837-3536. That's 503-837-3536. Now here's the kicker. They're taking comments up to September 16th. So if you have some ideas or concerns, you gotta get them in, quick. Again, I'll leave all the pertinent links in the description of this video. So I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this episode. And since the show is sponsored by my real estate services, all my contact information is listed below. But in the meantime, I'm off to another extended Wednesday at the Willamette Summer Market. In fact, I did a whole series on the market in which you can find more videos at aroundtheneighborhood.tv. Again, that's at aroundtheneighborhood.tv. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the neighborhood. In the latest meeting that was held on August 26, it was brought up that there are three major concerns amongst residents when it comes to any improvements, which is how do they, how do they, how do the changes? During the last open house online meeting, which ran two and a half hours, they only discussed public comments and feedback for seven, little, little. during the last open house online meeting, which ran about seven, seven and a half, for the most part of the communities and constitu constituents, constituents. During the last open house online meeting, which ran about two and a half hours, they only discussed public comments and feedback for seven, seven, geez Louise.